Hi there, and welcome to this series of demos protecting your data with ExtremeIO X2 6.1 and VMware Site Recovery Manager. My name is Itzik Reich and I'm the CTO for ExtremeIO, and in this series of demos we're going to show you the upcoming integration between Zio 6.1 and VMware Site Recovery Manager 8.1. Okay, so in order to start the demo, the first thing we want to do is create some volume and virtual machines that we want to protect. In order to do it, I've installed the EMC VSI plugin Virtual Storage Integrator, which allows me to create volumes directly from within vCenter. I can, of course, create those volumes directly from within the XMS, but since it's a VMware environment, why don't we just do everything that we can using vCenter? So in order to do this, after I've applied the VSI configuration, I just need to go to the cluster, the DRS cluster that I want to create the volume from, select the EMC VSI plugin actions, new EMC data store, give the data store a name, just call it x 2 ds select the VMFS, select the VMFS version that we want to use, VMFS 6 is the way to go with vSphere 6.7 which is what I'm using in this lab, select the array that I want to provision this volume from, select all the initiator groups in this specific E6i cluster, Select the size of the data store, just call it half a terabyte, and I want to create two volumes for this sake of demo. Press the next and finish. Okay, it's now done, and we can see these two data stores have indeed been created. If we go to the XMS, we can also see it here, and we can, so, we can see also see that they've been mapped to those initiator groups. We can also go to the summary tab at the data store level and see using the VSI plugin which all star indeed connected to it. Uh, the name, the device name, the NAA ID, if that's what you wish, and even things like uh, capacity, which of course it's almost empty because we haven't provisioned any VMs to it. So speaking about it, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to provision four VMs into these two data stores, two VMs per data store. Okay, the VMs are now being cloned. Okay, now we have two VMs on each one of these data stores that we have just created. And before we start to talk about replication, I want to show you something else which is very new to Zio 6.1, which is the version that we are just uh, releasing now. It's the ability to detect data reduction per volume and physical, unique physical capacity per this volume. So in order to, to look at it and see it, you just need to select these volumes that we just created, go to Manage, and press Calculate Savings. It will take a couple of seconds, and then we're going to come back with the actual result. Okay, so we can now actually see the data reduction per each one of the volumes and the unique physical space that each of them create. The reason, by the way, that despite the fact that all of these are four clones of the same VM, hence the reason why you actually see only one data store that's unique in consuming the capacity, because the other is just using more logical capacity, not unique physical capacity. And this is indeed the unique physical capacity of one of these Windows Server 2016 that we've just cloned. So anyway, that's a new feature of Zao 6.1. Nothing to do with the replication, but it's a new feature that you customers have been asking for quite some time, and I'm happy to report that it's finally here. Okay, so now that we've created the volumes and provisioned some VMs to it, let's talk about extremely native replication, which is really unique in the industry in the way that it's moving the data, which does dedupe and compression at the source, as opposed to just deliver the data and then possibly dedupe or compress or only do one of them at the target. It's really leveraging the extremely cast architecture understand the data and the metadata at the remote site and because of that only moving the unique blocks. So the first thing that you need to do is to pair the XMS arrays which I've already did. Pairing is very easy. You just press the add button and it will allow you to pair the pairing the remote XMS that you want to replicate the data to. And the second step is to also let it know which ports you're going to use for native replication. You have two options. You can use the copper link ports or you can use the iSCSI ports if you're not using them. I'm not using the iSCSI ports, I'm using fiber channel ports for my data target, so I'm actually using the IP, the iSCSI ports, to replicate the data. And because each exploit has two ports, that's th those are the ones that I'm actually using. So it's two ports per storage controller. I have got a single exploit in my lab, so four ports in total, replicating to other four iSCSI ports at the remote extreme array. The first thing that we can now see if we go to data protection, and we haven't started any data protection session yet, as we can see the main screen, the RPO compliance, the protection session, and other information, and so on. 
So what we're going to do, the first thing is actually create a retention policy. This is basically the RPO that you want your data to fail over to, and you can select many, many, as much as you want here. I'm just going to create one, and I'm going to give it a name. Let's just call it one per 60 seconds, which is what I'm going to do, which is one snapshot, one snapshot every one minute. You can also add some other period if you want to, like medium retention and and long-term retention, which I'm not going to use for this sake of demo, but those are, of course, available. So once I created that retention policy, I can also go ahead and clone that retention policy to the remote target, because currently that's the retention policy on the source array, which I may or may not use. It's up to me to decide. So I am going to clone it. It's very easy. Just press the duplicate button, select the remote cluster, and press the apply button. That's about it. The next step is to create a consistency group that will contain one or more volumes in it. We replicate at the consistency group level. And in many cases, you see customers that are using multiple volumes inside a single consistency group. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, which basically means that we'll be able to fail over or do whatever we want to do at the same time for these two volumes that I just created. So let's just give it a name, CG01. Press the apply button. That's about it. So now that I have my CG up and running with these two volumes inside of it, let's just go to data protection and actually create a protection session policy. Now we've got two options, create a local one and a remote one. Local one, we just leverage the external snapshots to protect the data locally. And a remote one is the one that is using native replication. I'm not going to create a local one because that was available for quite some time. I'm just going to create a remote one, which is again leveraging the external native replication. So the first thing you want to do is press the remote one and then click the new button. It asks you which consistency group you want to create or use. So I've already created one, so I'm just going to use the one that I've already pre-created. Click the next button, select the remote extreme IRA. Now this is the interesting part. I can select or create those CGs and volume manually, but in 99% of the cases you actually want Zios to automatically create this remote consistency group and the remote volumes for you which I'm actually going to use. The second interesting part is the ability to select no access or read access for these CGs. In most of the cases, especially if you're using a VMware environment, read access is what you're going to select, which is automatically selected for you. So let's just create the next button. This is the part where I mentioned before where you can actually select the source retention policy or skip it. I'm just going to skip it and create just and use just the target retention policy, which is this one. Press the next button. Give the session a summary, just call it SRM01. I can then click the finish, which will create a session but won't start it, or finish and start, which will create a session and start them for me, which is what I'm going to use now. So you can see it's already creating the remote session at the remote array, and indeed if I go to the remote array, I can see that this remote volume were created for me. They are indeed in read access mode, and the consistency group has been created for me as well. And if I want to, I can also go to data protection, click the session tab, and see how long exactly it's going to replicate the data. It's only about six seconds now to replicate the data. Let's actually click it and see the amazing viewing capabilities that we can now see. It shows you the replication efficiency, the bandwidth that it's currently using, and because it's almost the same data, it's already finished actually moving the data. So we can now see details like what's the RPO that I selected, which is in the 60 seconds. If you remember, it was one minute. But the actual RPO that I'm using is 28 seconds. That's because of the super efficient way that we do replication within Zios 6.1. I can also go to the protection copy, which will show me all the point in time that I can recover from. So that's about it. The session has been created now, and I'm fully ready to start working with VMware Site Recovery Manager.